Okay, so today I'm really excited to talk to you about a new piece of gear that I've had here in the studio for about three months. I've been using it extensively in many different type situations, whether it's on a stereo bus, stereo guitars, uh, vocals, uh, individual bass, as well as on my master bus processor, and that is the Tegler Audio EQP1, which is a dual mono or a stereo uh, Pultec style EQ. And I'm going to tell you, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I wouldn't give this thing up. You couldn't pry it from my hands. Yes, you can already tell I'm a fan. And I'm going to demonstrate later in the video as why you're going to soon turn out to be a huge fan of this, this EQ. Because not only does it sound freaking amazing, not only does it have many different applications uh, to be utilized over and over and over again simply by processing it, and then printing those stems and bring them back in. And so ultimately, it really is an amazing tool for your studio. And if you can afford that and you're in the budget or you're in the search for a Pultec style EQ, I cannot strongly recommend this one enough. Not only that, but it's got a great price that I'll talk about here in just a second. Before I do that, though, today I'd like to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video. And that is, well, it's me. Well, actually, me and my wife. We have a secondary business called artisanwoodshed.com. Please go to that website, artisanwoodshed.com, and you can see examples of the work we do. We do a lot of epoxy base or char charcuterie boards and things like that, as well as tables. We also make cutting boards. We make edge grain cutting boards and end grain cutting boards. Today, I want to talk about something that all of you, or at least most of you, are going to be able to relate to, and that is this one right here. This is an edge grain Telecaster um, cutting board. It's an inch, and let's see if I can get that over there. It's, it's an inch and three quarters thick, and this thing is an absolute beauty as you go through here. Again, you can tell by the thickness of it, and this is what you call an edge grain cutting board, which is one of the finer, higher quality cutting boards that you can buy. If well taken care of, this thing will last you a very, 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 very long time. This particular one, let's take a look at it again. This one's got some paduk in it. I'm sorry, got some maple, then some paduk, then some black walnut. Here you've got purple heart back with paduk, maple, paduk, and maple. This is the exact size. This is actually taking a Telecaster um, template for, do, for making a Telecaster, a router template, and making this. It's just a lot thicker than your typical Telecaster. So if you're looking for a special... Um, special gift for somebody in your life that is a musician. This makes a great gift for a birthday. Could be great for Thanksgiving. Look fantastic uh, on your on your display and everything of your food for Thanksgiving, as well as a wonderful Christmas present. They are made to order, so get your order in soon. And you can go to our website, artisanwoodshed.com. Go to the store. You'll see this this board as well as some others that are for sale right now. They're all made to order. And you can place your order there. There's an Etsy link down below. Go check it out. All right, so let's get back to why you're here. And let's talk about the Tegler Audio uh, Dual Mono slash Stereo Pultec EQ. It's called the EQP1. This thing is absolutely wonderful. And, and I absolutely love it. And I'm going to demonstrate for you here in a minute some reasons why. What are some of the things it's going to do for you? Well, a Pultec EQ, and specifically this one, it's really going to get rid of that harshness that may exist in, in, in any of your particular tracks as well as on your master bus and kind of round it out and smooth it out and make it more polished sounding um, so that you get a much greater uh, end result on everything. And it's really going to do that incredibly well. Whether or not you're using it on particular buses that you have or applied to individual tracks, as long as you're willing to go through the process of printing stems, you can use this throughout throughout your mix project uh, with just one unit because it is so powerful. It's a truly wonderful, wonderful uh, EQ. I'm going to put up a video here showing the current price as of this video. Uh, who knows when you're going to be watching? So that's as of today, which is in September in 2023. All right. So anyway, we're going to go on to some audio examples here in a second. And what we're going to put it through, first we're going to go through... Uh, and put it on a drum bus. And we're going to go through the processing on that. You know, we'll start out by, uh, 
you know, just, t- you know, keeping it bypassed and bringing it in and then start to dial it in until we've got an EQ that works. Now, as it relates to this track, let me tell you about this track for a second. This is a track that a friend of mine did. Uh, he plays in a hard rock slash metal band here in Orlando, Florida. And, and they recorded these themselves. And then ultimately he sent it to me. It's at the beginning stages. We do plan to do a lot of overdubs later on, maybe retract certain things. Um, so I just decided to start playing around with that one because I think you can show and demonstrate what a tool like this can do at the very beginning stages of your mix. By no means is this thing even remotely close to mix. It still needs a lot more work. Um, it has no automation, anything like that. It has some basic plugins throughout it and some hardware inserts. So that's going to apply throughout the throughout everything here. So first up to the drums, the first thing you're going to notice uh, is that I have on the um, on the kick drum I'm using um, Heritage Audio HA73 EQ. I'm bypassing the mic preamp on that. On the snare drum, I'm using a Warm Audio WA73 and EQing the snare again, bypassing the mic preamp. And then the rest of the things are plugins on there. So what you're going to see is this is ultimately going to be on the on the um, the buzz processor. I'm sorry, yeah, the buzz channel, the drum buzz channel for the drums. And that's where you're going to see a stereo instance of the EQP1. So let's go in there and let's listen to the audio examples. So there you have it on drums. You can come to your own conclusions. Uh, you may dial in the EQ differently uh, for whatever song you're working for. Uh, this was a quick go through it. And so anyway, there's that. So next up, we're going to put it on the guitar, uh, the guitar bus channel, right? So we've got two guitars, um, both two tracks for two guitars, pan left and pan right. And we're going to apply that to that. We're going to leave that whole mix going as that's happening and kind of dial that in. Uh, and really what we're trying to do is clean out some of the mud. Uh, there, there's a lot, there's some mud on the guitars, even though they've already been EQ'd with some plugins and things like that. Uh, these guitars really weren't recorded very well at all, so it was kind of hard even getting them to where they are now. But what this did is it really rounded out the harshness that you'll notice in those guitars, as well as cleaned up the mud on the bottom end. You know, after, after our adjustments there, you'll notice that there's a lot more we really clean it up so you can hear the bass come through as well as the snare and so you can hear those individual tracks by cleaning up that mud down there and getting some of that out and if you notice on the settings and you'll notice on the settings of it when you go through it there's really some minor adjustments going on there not much at all so anyway let's get to the audio examples of it on the guitar buzz as we go we dial it in and then we of course bypass it and then bring it back in at various uh, various stages along the song, okay? Let's go check it out.
something that seems out of reach leads you to a different world. Lastly, I'm going to demonstrate one of the most common uses of a Pultec EQ, and that is on your master bus. And so I've got this set up on my master bus, and I've got fairly typical EQ settings on there that are fairly common uh, that most people use. Now, keep in mind, if you're not familiar, having the Pultec EQ set up with these type of settings, you would do that before you even start mixing, before doing any compressing, EQing, or special tools that you may use in your mixing process along the way. You want to have those listened to and be able to make those decisions as they're being listened to uh, and affected by the, that pull tag EQ. And so as you go across the settings on this, again, they're very common. I would say the only place where this is somewhat different, a lot of people will start at 20 hertz on this particular track. I've started at 30. And then you notice I've got a, a wide curve on this. That's, again, very common. And I'm affecting that at 8K. And so 8K is another one that I've chosen. I think it works best for this. I would say probably most people choose 10K and some do 12, but you'll have to find what works for the style of music that you're doing. But these are fairly common settings on the mix bus. What you're going to hear here, in my opinion, is you're going to hear again, that harshness. We keep talking about that. Any harshness that still may exist throughout the mix, this is really going to soften it up, start to polish it up somewhat and really kind of sound more like a finished product, especially considering this tune is in, I mean, the most fundamental basic stages. There's, there's really next to no mixing or processing happening quite yet on this particular session. And still you note the magic of this particular unit on the mix bus. So let's go check that out and listen to that. We'll bring the tune up, we'll bypass, and then bring it back in at various stages, and you'll get a chance to hear what I'm talking about. And the walls around me Deceiving me from what my new bed You're left with the moment That keeps me from breaking down Left with the moment That keeps me from breaking down Hopefully you enjoyed what that did for the mix bus the way I did. I think it does an absolutely fantastic job, and this is a good solid reason why I love this particular EQ. Uh, not only do I love the fact that it's a pull take EQ, which is an amazing tool to have uh, within your studio, but when you compare that this is a dual mono, meaning you can apply it to vocals, you can apply it to bass, on mono channels, or anything else you wanted along the way, print that stem, bring it back into your session, and so next, move it over to something else and keep using it over and over and over as I've somewhat demonstrated during this entire process. And so it's a really great tool. And this one sounds absolutely fantastic, in my opinion, and should be on the top buy list if you're considering buying a Pultec EQ, especially a stereo Pultec EQ or even two Pultec EQs. To me, this should be the one you purchase uh, because when you look at the price performance ratio of this, it is incredibly compelling, and, and it's why I have it in my studio, and I absolutely would not give it up under any circumstances, okay? So do me a favor. Leave me some comments down below. Tell me what you think. 
If you happen to have one in your studio, share with the rest of us what your thoughts are and what your experiences have been using your EQP-1 in your studio, okay? And so let's talk about that and let's discuss about it. I love doing that. I love seeing that. But until next time, hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.